When things get out of hand, there are always people to help. Whether they come from their own families or jobs, volunteered or paid, they are here to help in times when you need them the most. The brave volunteers on the front line are always ready for when disaster strikes. In this documentary, you will see how these brave men and women help out the community and save lives, whether they have come from a fabulous day at the beach or come from a sleep in the middle of the night, someone will always be there to help. Hello, my name's Pamela O'Connor and I'm the group leader of the Mullaney State Emergency Service Group. Why did I join the SES? When I came back to Queensland, the local police officer here found out I'd come back from Queensland and knew that I had uh, been in the emergency services in Victoria prior to coming here and he asked me if I was interested in joining the Mullaney group so that they could use my expertise and my experience. And my first night at the State Emergency Service, we were then located up at the Water Tower here in Mullaney. And the local policeman picked me up and took me home, which was really nice. What do I like about the State Emergency Service? I like the people that I meet. I like the people that I work with. Over the years, the training has developed significantly and I enjoy teaching people the necessary skills and drills and functions that they need to have to support their community in times of disaster. Uh, the friendships I've formed, a lot of long-standing friendships over the years. Um, the activities that we do when we combine the groups, uh, we have rescue competitions and they're Queensland-wide as well as Australia-wide and we also have activities that we do at group training every week. It's wonderful to see the young people come into the State Emergency Service and gain their Certificate 2 in Public Safety and then go on to work in the Emergency Services or Public Safety sector after they've left the, st as the State Emergency Service. When you see a young person come in and you see them learn and enjoy, have fun and then on the serious side, go out and help their community and to see them giving a worthwhile contribution really gives me a nice warm feeling inside because I know that, that those things that they learnt will stay with them for the rest of their lives. And that's one of the many reasons why I stay in the State Emergency Service. There's a couple of experiences that I could share with you. Um, as you can appreciate, I've been in the State Emergency Service for a long, 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 long time. And if we think about the recent things that have happened, um, the most recent is the Perigian fires up near Coolum. And that was a really bad time around the state. And um, we went up to Perigian and our function was to help the rural fire brigades and the urban fire brigades in putting that fire out. We didn't actually put the fire out but we did things like uh, operate the radios for them, clean their trucks when they came in for a break, make sure that their trucks were full of water, 
uh, before they went out to fight the fires again, made sure they knew where they could go and clean up, made sure that they had plenty to drink, plenty to eat, got their eyes washed out, which is very important because when you're out fighting fires, they get the soot and the ash and the dust in it. Um, another function we did was to close off various roads because one of our functions is traffic control. So we were closing off the roads. In one area, we closed the road off specifically so that cars didn't come into where all the helicopters and the water bombing planes were landing. Uh, and we were looking after and refilling the uh, temporary dams to make sure that they had plenty of access to water to fill up before they went out. And the other areas that we closed off were the areas where people were living. And that was done specifically to reduce the risk of anybody going around and doing bad things like robbing houses and stuff while people weren't home. And as long as the fire, firefighters were out there, we were out there also. And that was um, a very long operation. And I know there was an awful lot of people from the State Emergency Service here on the Sunshine Coast, as well as Mullaney Group areas, that went down and helped the firefighters in their role of doing that job, of putting out the fires. And as we know, it was a good outcome because only one house burnt down and nobody was injured which was really good. So my name's Jared Ashcroft. I'm from J Sports First Aid. I'm the manager and owner of this business. Um, I'm also the Deputy Group Leader of the Mullaney State Emergency Service and a Crew Leader of the Mullaney Rural Fire Service. So first aid is important for me for keeping up my skills and uh, how I run my business on a daily to day basis. Um, I do sporting events around the Sunshine Coast. Uh, I look after BMX and other events in Mullaney and down the coast. Um, so it's basically just to keep my knowledge and skill sets up to date. First aid is beneficial to the community on how to perform first aid in certain areas uh, in your workplace or if you've come across a car accident out on the street, you've got to know how to do first aid. And with my role as an SES member and a Rural Fires member, I use that in my community daily. I have come across numerous of traffic accidents in my time in the Rural Fire Service and SES, including recently at a traffic accident down at uh, the Mullaney Lansborough Range where an elderly lady was involved and trapped. Um, I was second on scene and we ha I basically performed first aid on that lady and kept her awake and conscious without moving until the emergency services arrived on scene to extricate her out of her vehicle. What I find enjoying about being part of the emergency services and a volunteer is that I actually give back to the community. I volunteer with the emergency services. I'm part of the Mullaney and District Rural Fire Service and the Mullaney SES. Uh, I've been a volunteer with those services for up to 16 years now and the skills that I have learnt are above and beyond what I thought of the emergency services and I'm proud to be a volunteer of this community and I encourage anyone from the younger age to start learning about being a volunteer and what they can actually do in their later life. So this is our ladder that we use in day-to-day -day operations when we're out and about. Um, we've retrofitted our ladder rack with a uh, easy glide, so it makes it easier for our shorter members to access our ladder and makes it a safer platform to work with. Again. Uh, this is the back of our Mullaney SES crew vehicle that we use to go out 
on rescues and other bits and pieces. Um, as you can see, we've got three seats facing the rear with two fold down jump seats. So our vehicle only carries five people in the back with two in the front. All right, so to our right is our rescue backboard that we use uh, out on rescues. And also in the clear bag that is behind it is our dry blankets. Uh, up in front, we've got the rescue harness for the helicopter and winching and equipment underneath. To the middle of our vehicle, we have our ladder stop, which is what supports our ladder and some traffic hats. Uh, to the very far left is our first aid kit, which goes out everywhere we go. Hi, my name's Sue Bielow and I'm the group leader at the Twanton SES and I'm the local cadet coordinator at the Karura PCYC Emergency Services Cadets. So the value of a cadet program over the years, we've been running it for 20 years under three different programs um, and it's very important because there are a lot of cadets, a lot of children who would like to be uh, into that sort of emergency service area as a career later on and this gives them not only an idea but it starts giving them the skills that they need, so the basic training. It also opens people's eyes to what's available. So for instance they might be interested in being a fireman but they have no idea that there's many branches of fire that they can go into. Um, all the police, um, you can become a volunteer for the State Emergency Service or Fireys or you can be a paid uh, employee of QFIS, so Queensland Fire and Emergency Services. We've had cadets who end up as paramedics um, some go into nursing, they're interested in that side of it too. So it has a very broad appeal um, and it gives young people a platform for finding out about these sorts of things and starting to actually action what they might want to do later on. Um, I, what do I get out of being a volunteer for, for uh, SES and for the cadets? And I have done that for 20 years so I do get a lot out of it. Um, I, I get to see young people who are passionate and motivated and really love learning these sorts of things that we can teach them. And you don't have to be academic, you don't have to be scientific. You can just be the best cadet that you can be to fit in and be successful. Um, and that gives me immense satisfaction because to me, as a teacher, that is also real education. I don't force anyone to learn. People turn up every day happy to see me, happy to, to do what we're doing and engaged and motivated without me even having to try and engage, engage them. So I love seeing that, I love passing on my knowledge and I love it when my cadets are actually joining SES or the fires and, and out there working with me in the field. It's a really um, immensely satisfactory feeling and I have great pride in all the kids that have come through. So there's a few groups out on the Sunshine Coast area and inclusive of Queensland of the Australian Emergency Supporters. Uh, Ollie in particular loves everything to do with the emergency services and films all the emergency vehicles and the roles that they do across Queensland. And I support him in every way that he does that, including the other young fellows by the name of Zach and Sam and how they are also part of the cadets and, go, and so forth from there. It's Seeing the enjoyment that Ollie, Sam and Zach get out of the work they do and they, the, what they post to their YouTube page and it, it gives them the bit of excitement of what they are going to come into if they join the emergency services. Uh, my name is Daniel Sandman, I'm the Calandra Group Officer for Rural Fire Service. I've been in, the, uh, I'm coming up to 16 years at the end of this year in, in rural fire service, so it's been an exciting time and uh, continue to do it until I can no longer do it. I was actually in the Navy cadets here in Mullaney um, and one of the instructors there was actually part of the rural fire service and SES, so that got my interest because I kept hearing about the stories that they were going to fires and different activities and that kind of stuff, so once I turned 16 I was old enough to join uh, the RFS and that, that's where I got in. Um, and it was a quite a simple process. You come in and put your expression of interest in um, and you have a meeting with the brigade uh, and they vote you in as a member. And from there you go and do your basic um, firefighter minimum skills training. Um, and then that allows you to then go out to uh, fire calls and out to burn offs and that kind of stuff. And then from there we've got different career progression. So 
from there I went through the advanced skills firefighting crew leader uh, officer training and that's how I got to where I am now as the group officer for Calandra area. So we do a, a training um, that we do regularly called the burnover drill. Um, so that's basically when you're out firefighting and you get, um, there's a potential to get engulfed by flames. Uh, so that includes getting back to the truck as quickly as you can, getting all the fuel off, so all your drip torches, all your um, jerry cans of fuel off the truck and away, uh, and getting that crew safely into the cab, pulling down the uh, fire blankets or the fire shields in front of the cab and that as well. So we practice for that regularly. Um, and each time, without putting anyone's safety at risk, we try and beat our last time. So anything over a minute, we sort of, um, we don't like because it sort of diminishes our life expectancy, but if we can get it under a minute and everyone's safe and we've done our job, then that's what, we, that's what we're happy about. I've been to very, um, some very large scale fires. I've been deployed to New South Wales, been in the Clan of Coolum, more recently Pregian Springs. So the training that we do regularly uh, actually works out in the fire ground. So we learn how to read fire behaviour so we can sort of see what the fire is going to do and be able to prepare, um, prepare for that for later down the track. Um, and little things if we don't feel safe in there that we can move away. Uh, little things like that that we train regularly for that when we go to even just a small uh, level one grass fire, every, everyday grass fire that we train for and that and we can read the smoke, we can read the fire behaviour. We learn about um, how different train and different aspects will affect fire behaviour and that kind of stuff. So when we're going to a job we can actually sit there and think about what our plan of attack is going to be before we even get there. So we've, we've built this um, command vehicle not only for Mulaney but to, for the area of the Sunshine Coast to help uh, provide support at fires. Um, so in here, in this box we have a um, instant command kit. Um, so we can set up that so we know when crews come in they have what we call T-cards so they sign on with vehicles and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's all set up in here so we can manage our crews and we know where they are in on the fire ground. Um, we do carry extra just bits of um, nibblies and that because if you are out of fire ground for ages and you are somewhere where you might not be able to get food, we like to obviously keep our crews happy and fed. Um, and same sort of thing, more notes, pens, pencils, just to write down stuff. Um, everything that we record for a fire can potentially be used later on down the track um, for any investigative purposes or anything like that. So that's in there. Um, we've also got um, a specially built electronic system through here. So we've got an inverter so we can plug whatever we want into that to the inverter um, and we've got a battery monitoring system and all that kind of stuff so um, fully lit up with leds um, around each side of the door so we've got lighting and all that kind of stuff at night uh, and then if we come around this side we are pretty much a self-sufficient um, communi um, incident control vehicle um, so in here we have a computer um, and a printer, so when the, we can bring up a map of the area um, and when crews are coming in we can actually print off maps and give to them with the fire and all that kind of stuff so they've actually got a bit of a visual rep uh, representation of what's happening in the fire. Um, up in this little board up in here we have what we call a battle board, um, so that's what we put our T cards on and whiteboard. So this is our um, battle board um, and we put our T cards into each different area depending on sectors and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, and that'll usually just sit like that so we know exactly what, what each truck's doing. We've got our radio channels, what our control name is, all that kind of stuff. So it's easily um, identifiable where, where all our vehicles are. But also if a senior officer comes up and wants to know what's going on, we can sit there and say, hey, we've got four trucks in the office sector, 10 trucks in the November sector. There's more in here because of structures under threat. Well, that's where the active fire front is. So that's up out of the way with the whiteboard so it doesn't get damaged. And then um, over behind my gear, because um, I was on call, uh, we have our radio charger, our battery charger, so we've always got spare batteries um, for the crews if they need to swap out batteries and put them on charge. Um, another um, plug-in for anything else, so our laptop printer and all that plugs into there. We've also got internet that's been boosted, so we actually have internet signal where we don't sometimes have phone signal. Uh, and then just generic cigarette plugs, um, USB chargers for phones if we're at an extended fire for a long period of time. So that's, that's Mulaney 91 that's been purposely built, paid for and funded uh, by the Brigade through the Rural Fire Brigade levy. Um, there's a few experiences that have sort of, that do tug at the heartstrings, um, such as Pridgian Springs fire. Um, 
stuff like Waluga Fire last year where we get paged, we go to the job, and that's what we do, we're doing our job. But to sit there and walk away and see and someone say, thanks for saving my house or thanks for doing this and that, and they've got tears and they give you a big hug and you know, offer tea, coffee, cakes, and I think that's that's what is what makes it worthwhile. So walking away from something like that, you're sitting there on the truck on the way home going, yep, yeah, I've, I've achieved the right thing today, I've, I've done what I need to do. And that's all we are doing, we're just doing our job.